Why, hello everybody, it is I, Super Paul Games. Welcome back to I Love Colonel Sanders. Thank you everybody who's been watching this. Uh, we are now in the cafeteria. Before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights dim. Oh, I'm about to get some romantic with some food. That sounded dirty. And your rivals entered to make a dramatic announcement. Oh, that you love me, Ashley, please. Can I touch you? That sounded creepy. I'd do it though. Today is lunch, with your consent. I will be prepared. Via timed competitive cook-off. I don't want to eat anything that Van Van might make. He, he killed that one kid, Beetlejuice. The level of theatrics with these two is off the charts. I have charted them. Nah, I could demand that they stop wasting everyone's time, but no, you're on, Team Rocket. A bit of lunchtime competition, eh? Count me in, even if I have to wipe the tables with you fools before I sit down to lunch myself. Then so be it. So be it. I'm not the fool, you're the fool! Fully, fully, fool, fool! Mmm, good one, Van Van. I like your gumption, delicious dick. Whoa! Oh yeah, that's my character's name. I'll be watching your performance, huh? When I got a real job at KFC in high school, it was a lot easier than this. I just walked up and they were like, you want a job? I was like, okay, you're hired. Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. No! I want to have the great kitchen cook-off. Now, now, students, please settle down. This is lunchroom, not a sports in court. For the sports ball, I want the ball. Finally, a little sense. You breathe a sigh of relief. <sighs> No, until, no, until we, not until we turn on the timer. Cook off, you bitch. Just then, a huge light blasts you in the face, flashing the word timer ready. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I stand corrected there, Professor. Mm -hmm. The hard way builds a solid foundation of confidence that cannot be swept away. Do you like it hard? I mean, uh, work hard. What? What? Colonel Sanders? And there's an original quote by me. Harley, a real Colonel Sanders. I don't think you're a real Colonel at all. In case anyone was wondering, I hope this message lifts, lifts you to victory. Let me sing you a song on the arms of an angel. Oh my. Like a diamond, I was formed under pressure. Oh, no, don't sing Vanilla Eyes. And now is my chance to shine. You can sing Queen. I will defeat you myself. Why can't we just be friends and rub genitals, Ashley? You had his chicken, and you made mashed potatoes and gravy on day one, and you're feeling like you can really impress him again. Am I gonna make coleslaw? Rotisserie chicken? Popcorn chicken? Sorry, I'm starting to think of Aqua Teen Hunger, not Aqua Teen Hunger Forest, <laughs> Aquabat songs. Two totally different things. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast. If the timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. Um, 100 degrees Celsius. Well, that's right. But how would you have even gotten to that school without knowing that? Luckily, they didn't have the Fahrenheit one on there. I don't know no Celsius, but... Oh, winter gets to rub my furry belly. All right, Mr. Sprinkles, let that inciting offer motivate you. Let's get a little creepy, Professor. You're going to need to season this chicken before you cook it. You don't know Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly, but you have an idea. Seven. Seven herbs and spices. That's wrong. I've seen schnozzes better since that and a miniature kind. No less. Now you got some basic steps going. It's time to elevate your craft. What state of mind offers the most flavor? Gratitude. That's right. You must never take this opportunity for granted. If you hope to succeed. Your classmates are rooting for you, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you. You better pick up the pace if you want to survive. When you were a child, your father told you never to forget where you came from. Every day. Hi, Dad. Don't forget where you came from. Uh, Mom? Every day you meditate on his advice and draw energy from that place. Or is my dad putting me in my place? Dad, look what I made with blocks. Know your place, son. 
Look what I made with Play-Doh. Know where you come from. Don't get too uppity. Sorry. That would be a great time to harness the energy. So where does it come from? A small town where dr big dreams are born. That's right. This is your shot, kid. And you're not going to miss it. I just realized my windows are open. It's the middle of the night. I hope the neighbors didn't hear that. You try to shout out the noise. Or shut out the noise of the arena and focus on your cooking. What is the sound of success? Sizzling. Mmm. That's wrong. Yeah, don't make me get the spray bottle. Don't spray me. You know what? I like... Why is it sizzle should be... Mm. You know it's Colonel Sanders out of the corner of your eye. I believe in you. Delicious dick. He's actually cheering you on with his chicken wizard magic. Which would be awesome, except no when he's watching you makes you totally forget what you were doing. Now all you can think about is dreamy Colonel Sanders. How many spoons full of gravy did it take to vet? Ah, oh, fuck. What were you thinking? Get your mind back in the competition. <laughs> You're stranded on a desert island with only one desert cookbook. Which do you take? What a dreamy hunk. Boner alert. Yeah, I know, right? You know what? Shouldn't you be focused on the challenge? You're falling behind. Yeah. Uh, riding a gondola with the Sanders. What does that have to do with crafting spectacular fried chicken and uh, delicate baked biscuits? Woof, woof. You're really struggling to keep up. At the next station over, Ashley has already begun plating elements of her dish. It's colorful. It's complex. I can be complex too, Ashley. To make up time, you toss your biscuit dough into a stand mixer. As you do, the crowd gasps. Ah, yikes! Oh, the wrong one. What's it? Ah, Miriam! Yikes! <laughs> I know you love nothing more than seeing a fellow appliance utilized in a kitchen battle, but sometimes that means sacrificing the personal touch. <laughs> Miriam's just jealous. She's hot for hot pressure cooker, and she's like, yeah. That hole of a mixer. Might not have any hands, but delicious dick does. And a good chef needs to be touching the dough. Clanky, you can touch my dough to know when it's properly mixed. Mm, there's an easy way and a hard way. You don't go hard. I mean, what? You don't get far by going the easy way. When you hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your error was. I didn't even have a choice. I was railroaded. and you immediately shove your hand into the mixer. Don't do that. To rescue your dough before it's overmixed. I used to work in a bakery with this old guy. I won't say his name. And so we had these big old mixers. And they'd always say, never put your hand in the mixer when it's running. Because you can't, shouldn't, because you get your hand crushed. And so I never did. I'd turn off the mixer if I had to check the dough. And this guy would, would say that one day he just collapses on the ground. Why? Because the old man didn't listen to his own damn advice. He put his hand in the mixer to grab it some dough. I need that dough! And it smashed his hand. Luckily he was okay. Just his hand swelled way up. Nothing was broken though. Ah, delicious dick, no! Oh, it's not fast enough and your hand gets stuck. It's immediately crushed by the quick spinning beaters. There's no way you'll be able to use that hand for the rest of my ma the match. My beating hand! No! Colonel Sanders shakes his head in shame. Hmm, what you often find is that the easy way can turn out much, much more difficult. Somebody call a damn doctor. Er, everybody stop what you're doing now. Battle's over. I thought you had holes in your tights there, Ashley. I didn't realize you had little chicken cutouts. Drumsticks. It can't be. I was so close to finishing my dish. Oh, I'm about to pass out because of my broken hand. Sweetheart, look at your hand. You simply can't go on. Oh, that's too bad. And here I am with a complicated dish, dish ready to serve. Surely that makes me the winner by default. You're a complicated dish, Ashley. Oh. Well, no, no, no. It wouldn't be fair to compare the two on the account of delicious dick century. I think you're sending the wrong message, Professor. You're saying whenever you lose, just do something stupid to hurt yourself? <laughs> Remember that, kids. If you're losing at the end of the baseball game, run into the ball while the pitcher throws it. Game over. No one wins. Don't actually do that. 
You see Sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chops as he locks onto the dish. Yeah, but I suppose you should at least tell us what you prepared. Well, because I'm the sweetest, I skip straight to dessert. Ashley! Under this white chocolate dome, it's shaped like a boob like you, you boob. You'll find a wide array of delights, taking you on a journey of flavor that tastes good and tells the story of excellence. It's a heart. Maybe she loves me. Not desperate. I was going to ask Delicious Dick to do the honor, but since you're injured, I'm afraid that... Oh, man, she's going to let me eat her cream boob. Afraid that pouring this creamer of delicate hot sauce might be too difficult. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand. Colonel Sanders pours the hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients hidden within. It's a honeycomb? Inside, you'll find a delicate fried cheese croquette atop a slice of honeycomb, ice cream, two ways, tender nougat, and pearls of blueberry jelly. I don't know them fancy words. Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, but perhaps not as not impressed as he dips his finger in the chocolate sauce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Simplicity is not your strong suit, is it, Ashley? Oh, cold burn! Eat it, Ashley! <gasps> oh, you he! As he places a sauce-covered finger in his lap, Ashley leans over and whispers something into his ear. A dab of sauce sticks to his mustache. I'm going to internalize the rage I feel. I don't need to come off as desperate and clingy. Your rage burns so intensely within your eyes that they burst into flames. Oh, God, did I just die? The flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and turn to ash. And they fall off your face, which means you will have a hard time understanding... People have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester. Perhaps forever! Fuck. <laughs> now when I want to glare at people, I'll be like, I don't know what you're doing. Embarrassed and ashamed by your poor performance, not to mention your crispy fried brow, you run for the quad to be alone. I just want to be alone! I'm okay! The beautiful weather feels like an insult. Damn you weather! How dare you task me! Inside of you, a storm rages. It's Colonel Sanders. He's probably here to tell you that he and Ashley are in love and have decided to get married. All right, I think I'm emotionally unstable. My character is. I got some jealousy issues. And he won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. You try to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. Mm, I know you're hurting right now because you were a dummy put your hand in the mixer. Hmm. Not just from that devastating loss, but from that run-in with the mixer. I had a mixer that beat me up once in the school. And that small fire on your face, that weren't good. We should get that checked out, you know. <laughs> you want to play doctor with me, Colonel Sanders? Dr. Colonel Sanders? I'm fine! Can't you just leave me alone? I'm a loser, and I'm not fit to fill your fryer. I really wouldn't want anyone to get in the fryer. I'll never be a master chef like you. Failure is a part of life. Mama used to say, Harlan, don't wear my panties. And life is a failure. Not just for you, though, but for all of us. Do you ever think I never failed at anything before? Many times I failed at the things I failed at. That's exactly what I think. You've never failed. You're perfect, Colonel Sanders. Well, think again. I wasn't always the man you see before you. Enrolled in culinary school. Incredibly handsome. Successful and motivated. Once I used to be... I did a lot of meth. A lot of meth. I woke up under a carport fucking a squirrel. And then that squirrel left me. Because I didn't have my life together. I will never forget Squirrelly McNutnuts. And at that moment, I vowed to turn my life around. Well, I guess I was still handsome then, sure. But I was born that way. You can't control how you're born unless you're a wizard, but not a chicken wizard. Mm. I walked some other paths, too. There was once, you know, a path in the woods, and I saw a squirrel. And it reminded me of Squirrelly McNutnuts. 
Uh, sometimes you, you find a dead end, like in Rumble in the Bronx. I like that movie. Yeah, I was passionate about life, but I failed as an obstetric mission, probably because I didn't even know how to pronounce the word. I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a lawyer. I couldn't even get past the bar. All they'd give me is whiskey. I don't even think that's the right kind of bar. You're always passionate about livestock. So passionate. And then that farmer said, get out of my field. Betsy shouldn't be treated that way. Hmm. I even failed as a mule handler. And I tell you what, I handled that mule. Uh, that one was especially humiliating. Mules can be so cruel. They just use you and you lose you. I lost my business partner to a gunfight. I shot him. What? <laughs> and I lost my innocence when I picked up a firearm and put a bullet in my rival. You did kill your business partner. What? He survived for a while anyhow. I didn't I, I didn't know any of that. Uh, 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 people see my delicate rib and tie and my well-bred beard. I'm unkept. Nobody bred with my beard. Or maybe they did. I don't know. I'm not saying. They see this well-kept beard and they're like, oh. And they assume I got it all together. Which is true now. But it ain't always been the truth. The what? Truth. Sounds like this guy could really use a hug. I resolved in and there that I was going to amount to something. No amount. No amount of hours. Or labor, or monies, would deter me from giving the best I had to give. As Colonel Sanders changes focus, you can see something ignited inside of him. Hopefully not an eyebrow fire. A burning passion. One I had to remember that every failure hmm, can be a stepping stone to something better. You know what else is good stepping stones? My new dream is pure. It's honest. It's something that a humble man in a crystal right suit can be proud of. Mm, so proud. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurant that will bring joy to the entire world. And you can dip your potatoes in mustard if you like. And it'll make up for my past evils. Yay! Just as your moment grows intimate, you're interrupted by a threatening, shadowing presence. It's the Spork Monster! Battle scarred from the night before, you prepare for the worst. You know what? I bet he's a changed monster. I bet he's not like he was before. Borco? It is I. I know I said I wanted to be back. And after the whole fight to the death thing, maybe you don't really want to see me anymore. But I just wanted to say I was wrong to attack you. And I apologize. I know what it's like always having to look over your shoulder. Are you in the 12-step program? Because if you are, that's awesome. You're fixing your life. Monster problems, am I right? Are you saying I'm a monster? Well, I better apologize for that too, I guess. Thanks, Borko. I'm glad there's no hard feelings. Getting jumped up by a giant creature in the dark of night can really rile a person up. I also want to apologize for the way I switched right into attack mode. I know you're strong, and cooking school can put a person under a lot of stress. Stress sucks. I agree. I used to go to the school. I wasn't always a spork monster, you see. I don't believe it. You were human once. Well, no, I was a golden retriever. But I was still a student. Until one day, some mean kids with a magic spell book cast a dark enchantment on me. And I was forever transformed. Did they also give you that horrible voice? A magic spell book? Was it Van Van and my hopefully gr someday girlfriend Ashley? Precisely. I had procured a copy for myself, but somewhere along the way I've lost it. If you find such a book, I beg of you, respect it. You're a powerful chef now and shouldn't rely on dark and evil magic. Aw, oh, but I wanted to. No, you should be protecting the innocent from those who would cheat them. Through sorcery and guile. Wait. Is that how Ashley made that dessert? If you need me, don't fear. 
I'll be there for you. Oh no. Mm, sounds like there's some bad cooks in the kitchen of life. Delicious dip. Together I am sure we can defeat them. Oh, we're friends again. Come back to my hideaway and we can discuss. Oh, he's going to put the chicken in my fryer. A personal invite. You can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must be like. But it sounds like you're about to find out. Well, we're going to have to save those sexy escapades for next time. Is the Sanders going to diddle us in the diddle zone? Or will we just have some wholesome chicken? I really want some biscuits and gravy now. Take it easy, everybody. Thanks for watching.